If you're wondering how to use Nifty for your localization projects, in this video, I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial and show you how I set it up. I'm going to show you how to utilize the milestones, how to set up the structure of tasks and subtasks, and a simple way how you can monitor all your projects in one place. So let's get right into Nifty. So this is how we start. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our first simple project A. So on the left panel, as you can see here, we have toggled the projects and I'm going to click here to create a new project and name it project A. I'm going to make it public. The default task view will be a list and we're going to start with a blank project. In order for us to show a nice hierarchy on a timeline view, we're going to utilize the roadmap which actually requires you to set up milestones. Now, we're going to use the, let's say the top level tasks of our project as milestones so that we can use this view and drill down into subtasks. So this will not be the typical milestone that you're used to from, I don't know, bigger projects, like something special that needs to happen in the project, yes. Anyway, so I'm going to start creating the milestones which are our top level tasks for this project and we're going to add translation and for this one we had 30,000 words so we can start let's say today and we'll have people work during the holidays and they should finish on January 6th and create. I'm going to add another one this will be review 40 hours it starts right after and no help needed. So I think the review will start on January 9th and end on 13th. And then we'll do the final delivery, which will be on the 13th. And there we go. So this is our first basic, let's say, structure of the project. Like I mentioned, it's a very simple one, translation, review, and then we deliver. To the client. Now, next thing that we want to do is we want to create the subtasks. Because we added the main tasks as milestones, we're going to be adding the subtasks, subtasks as just tasks. So under the translation milestone, here on the right side of the milestone, I'm going to add tasks or subtasks for each language. For this one, we do German, French, Japanese, and Korean. As you can see, the due date is automatically set to January 6th based on the due date of the milestone. And the reason why we set it up this way is that now we can kind of toggle here on the roadmap, on the timeline view, and here we can see the, the individual tasks. Now, the reason why they're appearing at the end is because we didn't set a start date for the tasks. Uh, you can fix that by simply dragging it here, or we're going to then utilize the task list view. So for now, I'm going to continue adding these subtasks for view, Korean, right? And then we have the delivery, which is for all languages. So going back to the tasks, here we have everything, but now it's grouped by status. If we group it by the milestone, it should correspond to what we have on the roadmap. And here we have a bunch of fields. Uh, some of them we don't need. So I'm going to edit the columns that we have here. Uh, status, we can keep it. Assignees, uh, we can keep it as well. We have a due date, but we're missing the start date. I'm going to drag it to the top. We don't need any tags and milestone, we can show that because that's important information for us, even though we are also showing the milestone here in this view because it's already grouped by milestones. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the start date. So we said that we start today and here in Nifty, you can also pick the, the date right away. Problem here is a little bit with navigation like it's very mouse based, I cannot use arrow keys. And I certainly cannot copy the start date and paste it into the other values. 
into the other tasks, which is a little bit annoying. 12 p.m. Select. All right, so now that we have our start date and due date, if we go back to the roadmap and open things up, it should show that the subtasks or the tasks for each language are starting way earlier. They're basically starting the same way as the milestone thing, right? That's what we want. I believe this is it for now for our simple project A. If you want to add more statuses, for example, right now here we only have the to do status, you would have to change the grouping by status and then you can add more statuses. You can also change the colors of the statuses. But if we are keeping it very simple as something that needs to be done and then it's done, you are completely OK just keeping these default checkboxes for each task. And then as your project goes, let's say, I don't know, we complete the European languages, you tick it off and it should also highlight here on your roadmap, which I would say is your main view that you want to use to monitor where you are. And I think it's very nice. It kind of like fills up the milestone, the progression of the milestone. And then, of course, as you add more languages, it's going to fill up even more. So now we should have so now we should have 75% complete. All right. So that is our simple project A. Now, let me create quickly another project B, where I'm going to add a bunch of other tasks to make it a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to keep the same structure as here. Okay, so this is my project B that I just created. It has a couple of extra tasks. We have pre-processing, and we have MTPE, DTP, QA, DTP2, QA2, and delivery. So this project is for roughly two and a half weeks. And for MTP in and for QA, just to illustrate, I also added the subtasks for each different language. Now, the reason why we created project B is so that I can show you as we usually used to do is an overview of all your projects. And for that, you don't need to create anything special. All you have to do is just go to overview, which as you can see right here shows you your both projects that you have created. So here we have project A and you can also nicely drill down here into the individual tasks. And I can do the same thing for project B. So that's it, my friends. That was my quick tutorial for Nifty and how I would have used it for localization projects. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to use the comment section below this video. And if by any chance this video gave you some value, if you want to continue, if you want to see me continue the series, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our Localization Academy channel. And thank you again for your time and watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.